24, the season of the manifestation of the glory of God, part 48. Our theme scripture is coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 4 and 5. If you have it, say, I have it. Let us read, every valley should be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Welcome to Manifest Press International Church. Come on, Manifest. Let's welcome the world into God's Manifest Presence. If this is your first time viewing this broadcast, we are charmed to make your acquaintance Get ready to encounter God's manifest presence. The manifest presence of God has come to you through this broadcast, and you have entered into the realm of the glory of God. It's time to explore the realm of the glory of God from his highest heights to his deepest depths. Now let us perform our Wednesday spiritual workout and conditioning by quoting Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14, and declaring our six statements of faith. Lift those hands in the sanctuary. Lift those hands on the broadcast, lift those hands all over the world, and say, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. I am healed in the name of Jesus. I'm prosperous in the name of Jesus. I'm favored in the name of Jesus. I am delivered in the name of Jesus. I'm wealthy in finances in the name of Jesus. I'm victorious in that precious name of Jesus. Somebody put those hands together and give God some praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is the hour of power. Tonight we want to, as always, thank our faithful viewers and financial supporters on the hour of power broadcast. Tonight we want to give a personal shout out to Sylvester Aura, Valerie N., Sandra N. and Deborah N. Sylvester R. has some $150 in faith on behalf of the broadcast. Valerie N. has some $50 in faith on behalf of the broadcast. Sandra N. has some $300 in faith on behalf of the broadcast. And Deborah N. has some $100 in faith on behalf of the broadcast. Let's give God some praise for our faithful financial supporters. We want to thank you. For all of your continual financial support for keeping the Iowa power on the broadcast. If it wasn't for covenant partners like you, we couldn't continue to broadcast every week on Wednesdays and Sundays. Thank you, and may the anointing of God's favor and God's power be upon you. If you too would like to sow into this worldwide ministry, please go to www.manifestpresencechurch.org or use the cash app, dollar sign, Manifest Presence. We look forward to hearing from you. We'd also like to recognize a new listener on the broadcast tonight, Sister Patrice Cotton from Memphis, Tennessee. Welcome aboard the hour of Power Broadcast. We love you. Let's give God some praise for Sister Cotton and all of our broadcast listeners. Listen, we are at the last leg of the church era. The dispensation of the church is coming to an end. We are at the home stretch. Somebody say the home stretch. It's no time to stop now. It's time to finish and finish big. It's time to finish strong. Look at this. Say, I'm going to finish strong. Jesus said it this way in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. He said, but he that shall endure... That means stand firm. He that shall endure unto the end, what? The same shall be saved. Listen, you can't turn around now. You've been through too much to turn around now. You suffered too long to throw in the towel now. You started this race, now finish it. Look at they say, you started this race, now finish it. You are too close to quit now. That's a song saying, I'm too close to heaven. I'm too close to my journey's end. I, I'm too close to turn back in a world of sin. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Oh, no, 
You see, I've got to make it to heaven somehow. I can't turn around. Oh, no, I can't turn around. Look at this. I can't turn around. It's time to be rapture ready. This is the season of the rapture. And God is raising up the rapture generation. Look at this. I'm a part of the rapture generation. God is raising up the few a remnant in these last days. Will you be one of them? God is raising up the rapture generation. And we are the rapture generation. Look at the say, We are the rapture generation. If you believe it, give God some praise. We are the rapture generation. Listen. Each generation has its distinctive movements. There has been different kinds of movements throughout the centuries. There has been the Renaissance movement. movement. There has been the Industrial Movement. There has been the Pentecostal Movement that emphasized direct personal experience with God through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And we are now in the movement of the period of the rapture. And this season shall birth the rapture of God. Everything we do must focus and center around the rapture of Christ. The time of the rapture is at hand. And this, the time is of essence. Get your time in because payday, what, is coming after a while. That's a song that says, soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, he said, and behold, I come quickly. That word quickly means I'm coming soon. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Telling, I'm not telling God to enable you to see the unseen because that may not be the best thing for you. To see in the unseen realm is sight beyond sight. Furthermore, to see in the unseen realm is the discernment to see behind the motives of people. It's the, it's the discernment to see the intentions of others. I believe the closer we get to the return of Christ, the more of the unseen realm we're going to see. Moreover, the reality of the unseen is a greater reality than the reality of the seen. Don't, 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 don't stay with me. The reality of the unseen is a greater reality than the reality of the seen. The realm of the seen or the visible is the realm of mortals. Somebody say mortals. These are humans. These are people who live and they die. The realm of the unseen or the invisible is the realm of immortals. They don't die. The realm of immortals or in the invisible realm houses invisible beings like angels, principalities, cherubs, cherubims, seraphims, principalities and powers. That's the realm of the invisible. The realm of the visible is not the only realm. Don't limit your faith trust and understanding in what can only be seen. There are more thrones. There are innumerable kingdoms, rulers, dominions, principalities, and powers in the invisible realm than there are in the visible realm. What, what am I saying? Let's go to scripture. Here it is right here. How do I know I can read? In Colossians chapter 1 verse 16, listen to what it says. Paul says to the church of Colossians, he says in Colossians 1 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, what? Visible and what? Invisible. Whether they be thrones, 
dominions. Look at the S on the end. It ain't just one. Principalities and powers. All things were created by him and for him. In other words, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones. These are invisible realms. Kingdoms, invisible realms. Rulers, invisible realms, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. The reality of the unseen supersedes and trumps the reality of the seen. The realm of the invisible is a far greater realm. The realm of the invisible is far superior. The realm of the invisible is far expansive than the reality of the visible. As mortals on the earth, this is not all there is. Life on earth is not all there is. And that's what many people think. Oh, when I die, that's going to be it. Oh, you're going to find another reality. There are more hidden realms. There are more unseen realms than there are seen and visible realms. However, we are limited by the physical dimension. We are limited by the, by the physical parameters. However, one day soon, all of these limitations will be lifted. We shall be changed. If you believe it, give God a praise. The Bible says we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. All limitations will be over. You're going to be able to do what Jesus does. Your mortal is going to put on immortality. This corrupt going to put on incorruptible. Look at the name. Said, this is the season of the rapture. Listen. You say, listen. I, I don't know. I don't buy all that. Listen. And most scientists will tell you this. We are tripartite. Tripartite. We are body, soul, and spirit. Amen? We are one-third physical. You know, try means three. We are one-third physical. That is the material. And we are two-thirds. The two-thirds of us is unseen. How many has ever seen their soul? <laughs> How many has ever seen their spirit? What you see is physical. The soul you don't see, but, the, but science will tell you we got one. The soul is your mind. Your spirit, how many has ever seen that? We are one third physical. The other two thirds of us is unseen. We are more unseen than we think. That which is two-third part of us, the soul and spirit, will return to the unseen realm from whence it came. We are part of the unseen realm more than we realize. This is, go this is going back to the dust. What we can't see is going to the unseen realm. Who you really are is not this body. Who you really are is soul and spirit. The unseen. When we die, that which is physical part of us will remain in the physical realm. However, that which is two-third part of us, that is soul and spirit, will return to the unseen realm which it came. Furthermore, it is the unseen realm that brought forth the seen realm. I believe Deacon... One of the deacons mentioned this on, on Sunday. It is the unseen realm that brought forth the seen realm. The composition of the planetary systems of the universe were not created by itself or on its own. The Bible says in Hebrew 11 and 3, through faith we understand that the world, that's the universe, was framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The origin of the universe 
was derived by what cannot be seen. The seen realm is dependent upon the unseen realm for its creation. It is dependent upon the, uh, the, the unseen realm for its existence. Simply put, the seen realm is dependent upon the unseen realm. In fact, the soul and spirit cannot survive without the body, can it? The unseen is keeping the seen up. It's keeping the seen alive. The soul and spirit, once it leaves the body, we're considered dead. The soul and spirit can, can survive without the body, but the body cannot survive without the soul and spirit. That is, when the spirit, the soul and spirit leaves the body, we die. The body is dependent upon the unseen. The body is dependent upon the soul and spirit. In other words, the unseen realm is dependent upon the unseen realm for its survival. I know you say, well, you know, it's, 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 it's gravity that's keeping the, the earth apart. But you, uh, it is the word of God that's keeping the earth together. You know, they say if, if the earth is just tilted off one or a few degrees, it would, it, would, it would just fly off. Or if it was tilted one or two degrees, that we would burn up. Do you think that's by accident? The unseen realm is the eternal realm. The soul and spirit are part of the unseen realm. Why? Because the soul and spirit are eternal. Life comes by way of the spirit, not the physical realm. It is the spirit that gives life. And that's what Jesus, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said it this way. Jesus said in John 6, 63, it is the spirit that quickened it. What does that mean? It is the spirit that gives life. The quicken means to have life, to come alive. It is the spirit that quickened it. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profit nothing. And Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Life may be found in the physical realm, but life comes from the spiritual realm, the invisible realm. When healing cannot be found in the visible realm, it can certainly be found in the invisible realm of the spirit. When deliverance cannot be found in the visible realm, it can be found in the invisible realm of the spirit. When breakthrough cannot be found in the visible realm, it can be found in the invisible realm of the spirit. When financial deliverance cannot be found in the visible realm, it can be found in the invisible realm of the spirit. The realm of the invisible is the realm of miracles. When miracles cannot be found in the visible realm, they can be found in the invisible realm of the spirit. The realm of the invisible is the realm of the supernatural. When the supernatural cannot be found in the visible realm, it can be found in the invisible realm of the spirit. If you believe it, give God a praise. Listen, it's time to tap into the realm of the supernatural. Look at this, I came to tap into it. I said, I don't know why I can't because can, it was Wednesday night. I didn't know you were going to tap into the realm of the supernatural. It's time to tap into the realm of the supernatural. The realm of the supernatural is the realm of the spirit. And we have been given access to the spiritual realm. Although we are in the physical realm, we have been given exclusive access to the realm of the spirit through the Holy Spirit. The spiritual realm is where God's throne of grace can be found. And this is where divine favor and mercy can be found. The Bible says in Hebrew 4 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Moreover, listen, the Holy Spirit is the gatekeeper of the spiritual realm. What did I say? Holy the Holy Spirit is the gatekeeper of the spiritual realm. He decides who can enter and who cannot. 
This is why you need to get to know the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it again. The Holy Spirit is the gatekeeper of the spiritual realm. He decides who can enter and who cannot. This is why we need to get to know him. He knows all things. He knows the mind of God. The Holy Spirit helped form the, the, the spiritual dimension as well as the physical dimension. The realm of the Spirit dwells among us by, the, by way of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that brings us into the presence of the Father. The Holy Spirit takes us into the realm where all things are possible. And in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18, listen to what it says. Because we're about to pray. Look at this, we're about to tap into the realm of the spiritual. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 says this. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Remember I said it's the Holy Spirit that, that directs us, that catapults us into, into the presence of the Father. Somebody say the Holy Spirit. This is what it says, Ephesians 2.18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. In other words, because of Christ, all of us can come to the Father by the same spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. Moreover, the Holy Spirit gives us unlimited access to the spiritual realm. In fact, he has complete monopoly. He has sovereignty. He has absolute control over the realm of the spirit. Tonight, we call upon the realm of the spirit. The realm of the spirit is where God dwells. It's time to see the invisible. It's time to touch the, un the intangible. It's time to do the impossible. Tonight, we're looking for a miracle. We expect the impossible. Let us pray. You see, the enemy doesn't want you to pray. You know why? Because prayer opens up a portal in the spiritual realm. So I didn't know that. You know now. When you pray, you open a portal into the spiritual realm. Prayer is the divine privilege and ability to call upon a higher realm, a higher dimension. Father, open the door and grant us access into the realm of your glory. We need a healing. We need a miracle. We need your salvation. Listen, it's time to enter into the glory of God, the Father, by faith. Now, Father, now that we have entered into the realm of your presence, do a work in us. Do a work by us. Do a work through us. And do a work for us. Let your glory be revealed. We call upon the only omnipotent God, the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. We call upon the only omniscient God, the only omnipotent God, the only omnipresent God to show us your glory. Although we, you are the invisible God, show us your visible attributes. Manifest your power and the reality of your glorious presence through the working of signs and wonders. You are a God of miracles, signs and wonders. We believe in your power. This is the season of the manifestation of your glory. Make your presence known in this place. Make your presence known on the broadcast. Resonate in this place. Illuminate this place. Permeate in this place. Radiate in this place. Enlighten this place. Transform this place. Edify this place. Purify this place. Sanctify this place. Cleanse this place. Refine this place. Manifest your glory in unimaginable ways in this place and on the broadcast. You are a present help in time of trouble. Show us your glory and save. 
Show us your glory and heal. Show us your glory and make whole. Show us your glory and help. Show us your glory and deliver. Show us your glory and bless. Show us your glory and set free. As you sent down fire from heaven during the days of Elijah, send down the fire of your presence. Send down the fire of your glory. Send down the fire of your anointing. Send down the fire of revival. Send down the fire of the power of God. Let men and women know that thou art God. These are the days of Elijah. Answer us by fire. Answer us by the fire of your presence. As in the days of Elijah. Lord burn away and consume the stones of sickness. From the altar of our lives. Consume the stones of sin and iniquity. Consume the stones of cancer. Consume the stones of nerve damage. Consume the stones of diabetes. Consume the stones of muscular dystrophy. Consume the stones of heart disease. Consume the stones of mental illness. Consume the stones of liver disease. Consume the stones of kidney failure. Consume the stones of high blood pressure. Consume the stones of blood clots. Consume the stones of strokes. Consume the stones of terminal disease. You are our healer. Look up to heaven and say, Lord, you are our healer. You are our deliverer. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. You are our resting place. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Out of the fullness of your grace, bless us all. Bless us all. Bless us all. Somebody shout, Lord, bless us all. Command a blessing upon us and open up your storehouses and upon all we set our hands to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Somebody give God a praise. If this word have been a blessing to you, listen, it were, it were coming through the rain on this one. If this word have been a blessing to you, we want you to give. As God has purpose in your heart. If this word resonated in your spirit, sow a seed. Listen. So in this anointing, I want you to know God is getting us ready for that great day. Look at this. He's getting us ready. As the song said, Jesus is getting us ready for that great day. Who shall be able to stand? I want you to know he's soon to come. And how many want to be ready when he comes? Oh, glory to God. God is doing a great work in this time. Listen, we are the rapture generation. I need glory to put that on a t-shirt. We are the rapture generation. Glory to God. Where she at? She ran out. She, we are the rapture generation. Look at this. We are the rapture generation. Listen, God is getting us prepared. I need you to tell everybody that the rapture is on the way. I need you to tell your sons and daughters that Jesus is on his way back. How many are going to be ready when he comes? How many are going to stay in the race? How many ain't going to quit? How many are not going to throw in the towel? I want you to know Jesus is getting us ready. He's getting his bride ready to meet him in the air. We're closing. Amen. We thank God for you and your offering. Amen. Keeping this ministry, amen, afloat. We thank God for those who are in Memphis, Tennessee, who, who give each week. Amen. We couldn't, we wouldn't, I could tell you this, y'all, we would the door wouldn't be open if we didn't have their support. Amen. We have quite a bit, amen, of liability. Amen. We still have a mortgage that we pay every month. Amen. We wasn't able to close like we wanted to. Amen. Amen. We've had a decrease in our membership, but God is still blessing. Amen. 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 Things are not easy. Amen. But what you what, what you do makes a difference. Amen. We thank God for you. We're standing with this message. Spirit of the living God bless on tonight. Let your word come forth. Lord, let it let it come and fall on good ground. Spirit of the living God bless us as we lead this place, as we travel. Give us your traveling mercy. Lord, don't let hurt any hurt and danger come upon us. Lord, we came to spend an hour in your presence. And Lord, grant us our desires of our heart. Bless your people. Heal your people. Deliver and set men free. 
In Christ's name we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. We love you. May heaven smile upon you. May the grace of God 